Oh, a video from Eddie. I guess it's that one time a year again. You know what else is once a year? I don't know. How about something called the Super Bowl? Would you ask Tom Brady to throw footballs every single week instead of just throwing balls at the Super Bowl? No. Now, I know that possibly the most liked thing that I do on my channel now is review shitty 80s movies. And you probably saw in the title that I said that this is the best bad movie ever or something like Glasses Fuckboy Talks for 20 Minutes. Before we get into it, I have to mention that, you know, when everyone thinks of the best bad movie ever, they think of The Room from Tommy Wiseau. And here's the thing. I'm not knocking The Room. It was fun, you know, six years ago. But now it's kind of basic. It was fun when it was a cult thing, and I'm sorry, I'm usually not snobby about this stuff, but The Room just isn't that fun anymore. How many years can I go, oh my god, Tommy was oh so crazy, oh hi Mark. <laughs> if I hear one more girl on Instagram say, oh hi Mark, thinking that it's new and clever, I found that movie with my friends years ago. And you're just enjoying it now for the first time? Enjoying something? Not on my watch. Every bad movie video I make, I have to mention that I got into bad movies at the end of high school with my brother Tony and my friend Paul. And even back then, before The Room had a fucking movie made out of it that was Oscar nominated, before everyone knew about it, I thought that today's movie was better than The Room as a bad movie. That movie is Troll 2. The only backstory that I need to give you before we watch, because there's a lot to cover in this movie, is that you're probably thinking, Troll 2? I haven't seen Troll 1. Well, I've got news for you. Neither have I, and it doesn't fucking matter. There was a horror movie called Troll, and a completely separate group of people were making this movie, Troll 2. Its working title was Goblin. So it wasn't a sequel to the original. They shot the movie, and then some movie executive was just like, that's a sequel to a movie it has nothing to do with. So you will see absolutely no mention of a troll in this entire movie. Also, Troll 2 has a special place in my heart. It was actually one of the reasons I got into making commentary videos was this group of bad movies that I watched with my friends. And I made two videos on Troll 2 back in the day. Before, I would just do small scenes. And now we're doing the entire movie. Because I'm a pro now. I'm not some kid. Look at this fucking kid. Look at me now. I'm a man. I'm a man! And with that, we embark on this journey together. I'll see you on the other side and also during uh, the entire video. We're, we'll both be here. Like my good best friend, who's my best friend publicly, and he's said it before, he likes me more than his own kids, Philip DeFranco. <laughs> let's just jump into it. So let's get right into the first scene where our main character, Joshua, is being told a story by his grandpa, Seth. Peter was a courageous boy, but that dawn, he could feel fear stick to his skin like dew on leaves. Then he began to hear strange noises coming from the depths of the forest. Hey, Grandpa. This story sets up a lot, but it's really drawn out. So really, Peter is running in the woods from the goblins, and mid being chased by monsters, he trips and falls, and then sees this girl and is so horny that he just forgets that he's being chased by monsters. She was a lovely girl with huge eyes the color of the sea. She looked at him kindly, her expression full of love. So he instantly falls in love and eats the food she offers in the middle of being chased by monsters. Goblins still exist. Your grandpa Seth is telling you. And how did Peter end up? He began to feel ill, very ill. He was sweating chlorophyll green. Green? That's right color of the goblins. And that's how the goblins trap you and turn you into food. Um, so that doesn't really make any sense, but I guess Peter was too horny to survive. Food? Don't tell me 
me they ate him, Grandpa. That's exactly what happened. What are you doing still up, Josh? Grandpa said to tell me to stop. So Grandpa Seth is dead, and he's coming back as a ghost to talk to Joshua, his grandson. And instead of saying like, hey, I'm on the other side, this is what ghosts do, they'd float around. I'm on the other side, I love you, I miss you, Josh. He's sitting down and just going, these goblins are real, and they're gonna eat you, Josh. And also, I'm a ghost. We're gonna move fast through the intro because there's a couple of scenes in the house before they go on vacation, but the vacation, that's the meat of this movie. Before we do that though, I have to introduce you to Joshua's sister and her boyfriend. <laughs> Fuck yeah, exercise, Tom Cruise, a hat, Johnny Depp. I feel like I know this girl. What kind of idiotic joke is this? You scared the shit out of me! I'm the victim of a nocturnal rapture. I have to release my lowest instincts with a woman. Oh. Release your instincts in the bathroom! Oh, are you nuts? So Elliot broke into her room, scared the shit out of her, then immediately tried to start making out with her. And when she hits him in the balls, he goes, what are you nuts? You broke it, that's a, that's a crime. And then a double crime because you didn't ask if it was cool to make out with her, dude. That's two crimes. You can go to jail twice for that. Ugh, are you nuts? You trying to turn me into a homo? Wouldn't it be too hard? Oh? Uh, that's not how that works, Elliot. You can't say that anymore, that's fucked up. If my father discovers you here, he'd cut off your little nuts and eat them. He can't stand you. <sighs> and, and you? I like you, but my family doesn't like you. Uh, okay, so she hit him hard, but she just kissed him, and also their dad is gonna cut off his nuts and eat them. That's not like a normal weird dad threat. That's like you're a cannibal. They say you're good for nothing, and they spend way too much time with your friends. Oh, oh, but I swear I never see them. Elliot, how long is this gonna take? We're sick of waiting for you. Okay, so like, don't bring your friend to your girlfriend's window, but spending time with the boys, that's a, that's a sacred thing. You can't, you can't take that away from Elliot. That's unfair. What's wrong with having friends? <sighs> Nothing, if you want to remain a virgin for life. Is it true that your family's going on vacation tomorrow? Yes. I'll come with you? Okay, I'll tell my father that you're coming with us tomorrow. Where are we going? Nilbog. A wonderful half-empty town. It's an exchange. A family from the country is coming to live here, and we're going to live in their house. And my boys? If you bring them with you, I never want to see you again. Okay, I'm going now, and I'll tell them. All right, let's clear that up. She's not having sex with him until he stops being friends with all of his friends. They're going to a town called Nilbog, and it's a farmer exchange program where farmers come to live in your house and you go live on their farm. If you can't bring your boys to a romantic vacation with your girlfriend, where can you bring them? Please, don't do this, Holly. We could have waited another 15 minutes. I'm sure he would have come. We left at 9.30, an hour and a half off schedule, and we never saw a sign of your bow. Holly is extremely upset because the family waited an hour and a half for Elliot to show up, and he didn't, and she's mad that they left without him. Meanwhile, fucking Josh is in the back having nightmares about being eaten by goblins in the car, and the entire family turns into goblins, and he wakes up. Oh, also, um, Joshua sees a man at the side of the road that he sees Uncle Seth, so he stops, and this happens. What are you doing here, Grandpa? What are all of you doing here? You have to make them go back. Why? You're getting yourselves into big trouble. What are you doing, Joshua? So how about it? Are you gonna give me a ride or not? He possessed a dirty hitchhiker and just endangered Joshua's life 
I guess to warn him about danger, but you just put him in it, dude. Also, don't possess people. Now we've been warned that Nilbog, the town they're going to, is a bad, bad place that even gives a ghost the creeps. Also, in the meantime, Elliot is headed his way to the town with his boys. What a power move. Promise your girlfriend you're gonna have a romantic getaway and you still bring the boys. So the family arrives to the farmer exchange house and the family that's moving out to go live at their house are creepy and weird. You're late. I'm sorry, we had a small mishap. Here are the keys. Um, here are ours. You'll enjoy our city. It has some smog, it's a little noisy, but, but our house has all the major conveniences. Yeah, it's got a microwave and video. All the other appliances. Yeah! Uh, hey Josh's dad, stop listing appliances. They're clearly not paying attention. Hey, we have an Xbox and and we have Rock Band. The drums are a little broken, but and no, if you want to turn around, I just want to tell you that the pad on the Rock Band drums comes off a little bit, but you know, if you just tuck it back in, you can keep playing. You might have to do it every song though. It's starting to get real loose, but that's fine. Come take a look, everyone. Typical country hospitality. Let's dig in. I am so hungry. Here, have some of those. Grandpa! Don't let them eat, Joshua. For the love of God, don't let them eat. Okay, so we learned from this story before, you know, if you eat the food, it turns you into a f half human, half plant that goblins want to eat. You have 30 seconds to come up with some way to stop them. Joshua will A, remove the food from the table and throw it in the trash. B, take the pitcher of green juice and spill it all over the food so it's too soggy to eat. C, remove his family and put them outside for some reason. Or D, just throw the food out the window. What? You did what? You what? So time was frozen and Joshua had every option in the world and he decided to stand up at the table, unzip his pants and take his dick out and piss on the table in front of his entire family. That was the decision he made. The following scene is famous for people who like Troll 2. It's a classic, I have all of the words memorized, it's just one of those things. But re-watching it, there's a moment in this scene toward the end. Joshua says something that uh, didn't age well. Do you see this writing? Do you know what it means? Hospitality. You can't piss on hospitality. I won't allow it! What are you going to do to me, Daddy? <laughs> it aged so bad. Just looking up, what are you going to do? I can't even say it. You guys are going to fucking clip that on Twitter. He grabs the belts too. It's just so, it's way too perfect and gross. I hate it. What are you going to do to me, Daddy? Tightening my belt by one loop so I don't feel hunger pains. But just remember, when I was your age, I really did suffer from hunger. We'll see who gets through this. We get this kind of dark backstory that the dad was starving as a kid. And instantly, I guess, his son pissing on the food is immediately a hunger strike. What are you gonna do to me, daddy? Oh, God. So Elliot and the boys are chilling, just drinking some Mountain Dews in the RV. You know when one of your boys wants to intrude on his girlfriend's family vacation and you're just along for the ride? And um, this, horny, Dumbass goes and sees a girl running in the woods and he decides oh she looks like she needs help So I'm gonna sprint after her and tackle her. Who are you? Are you one of the monsters? Well, I've been called a lot of things, but not a monster. You're human? Very human. You want to see? He pretty much says do you want to see as in do you want me to show you my dick? 
Don't tackle her and then be like, you want to see my dick? Like, dude, she needs help. Uh, well, what are they? Monsters, what do you want from me? Uh, wait here, wait here. I'll take care of them. The goblins catch up to them, and he in no way is freaked out by the sight of goblins. She's just like, hey, can you take care of this group of goblins? He's like, oh yeah, no worries. I got this. Let me give you some advice, you dwarfs. Get out of here, or you're going to be in a lot of trouble. Uh, yeah, and then they stab him. They throw a spear at him and it pierces his chest. So they seek shelter in what looks like an abandoned church, and they're met by this witch who, the, her acting is fucking terrible. It's, I mean, everybody's is in this movie, but hers is like extra bad. We need a doctor, ma'am. Please call the nearest hospital. There is no hospital in Nilbog. We are used to curing ourselves. She offers them food, which as we know, in goblin territory is a no-no. And the girl gets turned into weird uh, plant goo and they start eating her, which prompts this classic line from the actor of one of the boys. Let's call him boy number two. They're eating her. And then they're going to eat me. Oh my God. So boy number two, is uh, freaking out about being eaten. I wonder what Holly's up to right now. Oh my God, this is the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Keep watching. Dear Elliot Cooper, tomorrow morning will be your final judgment. Either me or your boys. Choose the boys, Elliot. Think about this one. Choose the boys. The beautiful Holly Waits or your lovely little boys. Make a choice, Elliot. Joshua. Joshua. Grandpa Seth has a little misfire, you know. Sometimes you make mistakes as a ghost and you accidentally haunt your granddaughter instead of your grandson. And it's just your face instead of the rest of your body for the first time. We've all been ghosts, we all know what it's like. So the whole family goes and looks in the mirror and her dad's like, nope, don't see any ghosts, so that didn't happen, and they leave. Joshua then goes back in and Grandpa Seth again is like, you need to get everybody out of here, but it's really boring and dumb. So boy number one, he's a hungry bitch. So he tries to walk into town and gets picked up by a cop who's secretly a goblin, and they have really boring conversation. Then he finally finds himself at the general store, and this shit happens. Run. Run now. First off, nobody's ever moved out of curtains slowly and had good intentions. But also, if they're smiling while they do that, run for your life, dude. Can I help you? Coffee. There's no coffee here in Nilbog. It's the devil's drink. Eggs. Eh! Bacon. Are you crazy, boy? That's how I'm gonna order at breakfast places from now on. They're gonna go, what do you want? Eggs? Eh! Bacon? Eh! But then also, if they ask if I want coffee, I'll bring them slowly in by their collar, and I'll go, I see the devil in you, boy. And that's pretty much how I'm gonna order food from now on. The man then offers him some milk uh, to cool him down, I guess, because he's sweating gallons right now. Then the movie cuts to Joshua and his dad outside hanging out. And this is where Joshua makes an incredible discovery. Grandpa! Grandpa Seth! Are you there? Neil Bog! It's goblin spelled backwards! 
Fuck you, if you haven't seen this movie, you did not notice that. You didn't think twice about Nilbog being Goblin spelled backwards, and I know you didn't. You're a fucking liar if you did. I just love the idea of just naming your town what you are. So after that startling discovery, Joshua goes and sneaks into a barn, and the entire town is there doing some kind of sermon about how grossed out they are by meat, because I guess goblins are like super vegan. And they grab him by the face, like this, and try to force feed him ice cream. And this is definitely not ice cream. Joshua's dad comes to the rescue and they both return to the house where the entire town has gotten there before them and are having a party in their honor. Josh then tries to contact Grandpa Seth through the mirror and a goblin jumps through the mirror and tries to attack him only for Grandpa Seth to walk out into the real world as a person and chop the goblin's hand off with an axe. And you're probably thinking that's the max amount of violence that Grandpa Seth's gonna commit. But then he pulls out a Molotov cocktail and is like, hey Josh, I know how to solve the situation. And it's this Molotov cocktail. <laughs> it then gets stolen from him. And uh, as you know, Grandpa Seth summons the power of God and <laughs> hits it with lightning. So the guy starts on fire. Most of act three is just a bunch of bullshit. Right after blowing up the bottle, Grandpa Seth gets banished to hell and they try to do a seance to bring him back, which teleports Josh to the lair. So we're at the final moments where Josh is battling the witch. Here it is. The Stonehenge magic stone. The goblin's magic power. Grandpa Seth is like, hey, here's a stone wall. Uh, touch the stone and concentrate, and you'll beat the goblins. That's it, that's it. That's really kind of what he says, and he disappears and dies forever. So all the goblins stop attacking the family, because they're like, oh shit, Josh is touching a stone. So they're all zeroing in on Josh, trying to get him to eat this gross plate of goo. Josh pulls this food out of his pocket. A double-decker bologna sandwich! <laughs> So with bologna slices, a double decker you'd think is like two or maybe there's, you know, bread in between, but it's just like they opened up a pack of Oscar Mayer bologna, took the entire stack, put it in between two burger buns, and then we're like, here's here actor that plays Josh. Take a bite out of just all of the bologna. So to wrap things up, they get grossed out by the meat, and the entire family comes in to put their hands on the stone to beat the goblins, and they start exploding. It's really gory. I can't really show it on YouTube. So they did it. They beat the bad guys. Josh returns home, and you know how these stories always go. Josh sees green goo in his house and realizes that his mom is getting eaten by goblins. You know, like normal movies. Also, I can't show it, I have to blur it, but the rubber body they use for Josh's mom being eaten has like boobs with like nipples on it. And it's like, you guys, you didn't need to do that. You could have just made it green goo. You didn't have to show mom boobs. Um, and that's Troll 2. Don't you see why this is better than The Room? We got goblins, not trolls. We got love and romance. We got lust. Skateboards? We have, uh, no trolls. We let's get that right off the bat. There's no trolls. Ghosts? We have grandpa ghosts? What more could you ask? The Room is just a movie about a silly guy. This has got everything. I'm laughing. I'm crying. But that's just in between takes because I'm really sad. It has nothing to do with the movie. I'm gonna cut it out. The Room doesn't have shit on Troll 2. The Room is overplayed. It's overdone. And I suggest that Joshua Elliot, Holly, and the boys take the crown. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Say thank you to Skillshare. Say it. I'm gonna be real with you guys. Skillshare is actually a fucking awesome company. It's an online learning community with 
thousands, I think more than 25,000 classes on different topics ranging from like film and editing, photography, web design, business, entrepreneurship. There's like a ton of stuff. Graphic design. I'm remembering more as I'm listing it. That's how much. If you guys listen to our podcast, you know I have some views on the worth of college for certain majors and an annual membership for Skillshare is less than $10 a month. And there's classes from experts that are actually teaching you the thing that you'd probably learn in a college course anyway. I get DMs all the time asking like, oh, I want to make YouTube videos. How do I start out in editing? How did you learn? I learned poorly by myself and it took years and I'm still learning stuff because I never took any class. My first videos had some of the worst editing that I've ever done because I just didn't know what I was doing. So if you don't want to be an idiot like me and actually learn how to edit and do it correctly, I highly recommend Learn the Ins and Outs of Premiere Pro by Phil Ebener. A lot of times I think when beginning editors think that they want to learn editing, they want to learn this one really cool tool. But before you do any of that, you need to know the basics of a program and this is perfect for it. Now Skillshare does have a month free trial but if you click my link it's a two month free trial that's two months free with all of these classes and things to learn please click my link it'll support me it'll support Skillshare I'll be able to work with them in the future it's really necessary that you click that link anyways uh, thank you Skillshare and thank you guys for watching my video Uh, bye Thank you, Carrie, L, Justin, DWL, Sammy, Derek, Laura, Sarah, Kelly, Colleen, Sloan, Bernard, Rosalie, Mel, Olivia, Damian, Nick, Gabrielle, Matthew, The Hanging Judge, Dom, Kenzie, Mallory, Jackie, Kimmy, Aurora, Ezra, James, Diana, Cybercase, Brandon, Alex, Taper Tamer, Megan, Player N, Bran the Raisins, Reese, Amanda, Nichiban, Car Wreck, Haley, Elizabeth, Peter, Malin, Chelsea, Josie, Michael, Tyler, Dave and Janet, Marin, Jeremy, Cody. Thank you guys so much.